everyone. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to the General Purpose and Administration Committee meeting of uh, June the 15th. Uh, we uh, met prior to uh, open session in closed session. And I will now ask for um, or a moment of silence. And thank you very much. Um, matters from closed session. Um, Councillor Guido, I'll call on you for uh, a motion. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I would uh, like to make the motion. Would you like me to read out the motion? Yes, please. Okay. Um, not... Pardon me. Thank you. Um, Madam Mayor, apologies. Am I reading just the resolution? Yes. Okay, yes, pardon please. me. That report, CONF-2020-006, Economic Development Advisory Committee appointments be received. And? Further, Councillor Guido, uh, uh, part, part number two. Part number two, sorry, I don't have, I apologize. I thought it was gonna be up on the screen. That's okay, I'll read it. That Brigade Thank of a Cloud representing the Port Perry Business Improvement Area Board and John Rowinski representing the Mississaugas of Scugog Island First Nation be appointed as members to the Economic Development Advisory Committee for the remainder of the 2018 to 2022 term. And that motion is by Councillor Guido. Do I have a seconder please? I'll second that, Madam Mayor. Councillor Watton. Um, Mr. Clerk, um, can you call the vote, please? And uh, and then I'll ask you to make a, a statement about the processes for today. Mr. Voting Clerk. is open, Madam yeah. Mayor. Yeah, thank you. Councillor Ross. Did that go through JP? Voting is now closed, Madam Mayor. Thank you, and uh, it, that uh, motion is carried unanimously. Um, prior uh, to um, this open session, we had a closed session. We had a lot of technical difficulties with the, uh, the software. Um, and uh, to be fair, um, we've only done it once, and that was two weeks ago, so um, we don't have a lot of experience at it. And I'll, I'll ask uh, you, Mr. Clerk, to talk about the process for today for the, uh, for the listeners. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, and uh, through to Council, as we do with our electronic participation meetings, I'd just like to start with a roll call, please. And I'll start with uh, you, Councillor Watton. Are you present today? I am present. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor McDougall? Present. Thank you. Councillor Guido? Present. Thank you. Councillor Ross? Present. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Kieserbrink? Present. Thank you, and Councillor Brown. Present. And I will also, uh, so Madam Mayor, I can confirm that we do have a quorum of uh, members present. I'll also announce that uh, within the meeting today, we do have uh, staff members, uh, and just starting in alphabetical order, we have our manager of IT and GIS, uh, Adam Debecki, CEO of Library, Amy Coughlin. Uh, we also have Director of, Director of Public Works, Parks and Recreation, Carol Coleman. I'm Director of Finance and Treasurer at Diane Valentin. Uh, I have uh, John Parker, who's our payroll clerk, Kevin Arsenault, uh, who's our capital project technologist, uh, Director of Development Services, Kevin Heritage, Manager of Communication Strategic Initiatives, Laurie Bowers, Megan Michelle, uh, who's our um, a, uh, associate. Um, associate, yeah, uh, public work associate, um, our CAO, Paula Law. Uh, our Fire Chief Mark Burney, 
a manager of uh, public works, Robert Frasca, legislative services associate, Sandra Fry, uh, manager of uh, public, uh, manager of uh, recreation and culture, Shauna Cornish, uh, tax clerk, Suzanne Fox, manager of finance, Terry Barton is also uh, in the meeting today as well. Uh, and further to that, Madam Mayor, uh, I'd like to provide some instructions also to uh, all participating. Uh, I'd ask that everyone please mute your mic when you're not talking. This will avoid any background noise that may occur where you are and will avoid any echo in the audio. I ask that you please use headphones if they're available to you. Uh, if you'd like to speak, please post a message in the chat window. The Mayor will then call upon you when it's your turn to speak. Uh, if you happen to leave your computer, uh, especially members of council, please let the mayor know so that we can, can ensure that quorum continues to be met. Uh, when moving and seconding a motion, please announce your name. Uh, this meeting is being recorded and live streamed to the township's YouTube channel. Uh, as uh, the mayor had already mentioned, we will be using an electronic voting process uh, tonight. Um, at the appropriate times, I will announce that the voting is open and council members will be asked to make a selection. Once everyone has voted, I'll announce that the voting is closed. If for any reason a council member is unable to vote, please announce your vote verbally and say in favour or against, uh, and then I will enter your vote for you. Uh, if the electronic voting system stops working for any reason, we will revert back to the Mayor asking each council member for their vote. Thank you, Madam Mayor. That concludes my opening statement. Madam Mayor, that concludes my statement. Uh, Mayor Drew, are you still there with us? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I pressed my mute button like I'm supposed to, but I didn't put it back on again. I'm sorry. Uh, so I'll call for a disclosure of pecuniary interest and the nature thereof. Hearing or seeing none, um, we'll move to announcements from council and staff. And I have a couple of uh, opening statements. Um, I want to acknowledge our Scugog Fire Service and say thank you to our incredible team of firefighters for the response on June 9th. Scugog firefighters responded to a call that resulted in an explosion. Firefighters were injured when responding and we are very grateful that they are home and recovering. Thank you to our neighboring services from Uxbridge, Clarington, and Kawartha Lakes, as well as Durham Regional Police and Durham Region Paramedic Services for their assistance. Our firefighters are amazing, and I am in awe of such bravery in the face of danger. We are truly grateful, and thank you for your care and dedication to our community and fire protection services. We certainly wish you well in your recovery, both physically and emotionally. Thank you very much. That's uh, my first announcement. Um, we have all been greatly impacted by the events happening around the globe responding to systemic racism and discrimination. We acknowledge that we need to build alliances and seek solutions to achieve a safer and more inclusive community. We acknowledge that the broader community has made mistakes in the past and the peaceful demonstrations have brought to light the need for further and enhanced engagement. Scugog supports change to embrace diversity and inclusion and supports the efforts of the Durham Regional Police Service in their efforts to pursue equality and embrace inclusion and diversity through their training and their equity and inclusion unit. Thank you very much. Are there any other announcements from Council? Council Kiesebrink. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Further to your announcement regarding the Freilich Beach uh, Road fire, um, there is a Help Darlene and Joey Fire uh, GoFundMe campaign to raise, uh, the goal is to raise 25000 As of this morning, there was over $4,000 raised, but funds are still needed. The Mississaugas of Scugog Island First Nation um, have written, we can't express enough how grateful Darlene and Joey are for all who are thinking of them during this difficult time, and monies that are raised on this page will assist them with rebuilding their life moving forward. So I hope that everyone will go to the site and make a donation. Thank you. Oh, thank you, uh, Councillor Kiesebrink. And I know that the uh, Durham Regional Police uh, put out an all call for uh, a number of uh, pieces of uh, furniture and equipment and um, 
uh, some donations towards um, a, a collection of, uh, of uh, toys that the, uh, that the young guy was uh, particularly keen on. And within hours, all of that was fulfilled. So uh, we're very grateful to the Durham Regional Police Service for um, their help in this matter. Thank you very much, Councillor Keyesbrink. Are there any other announcements from uh, Council? Um, okay, I'll call on uh, our CAO. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll be uh, providing an update with respect to the uh, COVID-19 state of emergency. Um, maybe I'll just jump to the most uh, encouraging news uh, within the hour, and that is that uh, Scugog, as part of the Durham Health Unit, is moving to uh, stage two of the province's reopening plan. So very encouraging news. That will become effective at 12.01 a.m. on Friday. So um, that's June the 19th. Um, also included with Scugog is uh, Holton, York, Hamilton, Lambton, Niagara, and Haldeman, Norfolk. Um, Toronto, Peel, and Windsor, Essex. Uh, Essex remains in stage two until at least, uh, I guess, next week, until their numbers Stage improve. one. Pardon me, remain in stage one. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, before I talk about what that means in terms of being part of stage two, I just want to also uh, mention that the provincial declaration of emergency, it still remains in effect um, despite moving to stage two. And at the current moment, it's uh, in, in effect until June the 30th. Uh, additionally, all the emergency orders uh, as amended, mind you, and there's been many amendments of late, uh, they are uh, have been extended to uh, June the 19th, and I'm sure they'll they'll be extended in, uh, if not all, uh, several of those or most of those. Uh, so back to uh, what does that mean uh, moving to stage two for Scugog? Well, that does allow um, outdoor in dines in dining out outdoor dine-in, pardon me, services at restaurants and bars. Um, Shopping malls, although we don't have any, but shopping malls can open. Uh, swimming pools, uh, splash pads, our spray pad could. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, hair salons and tattoo parlors can open. Huh. Um, yes, also, uh, so I'm sure the hair salons are of most huh. interest to some of you ladies, but uh, <laughs> I know it is for my spouse. Um, the uh, anyways, uh, also, um, over the last few days, there's been further loosening of restrictions. I think they're worth noting. Uh, public and social gatherings have been expanded from five to 10 people. And uh, residents uh, can now uh, create social bubbles or social circles uh, with up to 10 consenting people. And places of worship are permitted to uh, Occupy the building uh, for services up to 30% of the building capacity as long as they maintain physical distancing. You've heard child care centers may reopen when they're ready to do so, subject to specific uh, guidelines. Um, also, uh, summer day camps may open, and uh, the summer day camps may open and, you, and will be permitted to use community center facilities provided the use of the facility is strictly for the day camp uh, in, in terms of its utilization for some recreational fitness or indoor sports. So um, with respect to these matters um, that will come become effective on Friday, uh, we, we did provide council with an overview of our reopening plan. And uh, if you look back at that, uh, the criteria that we set, for instance, for summer camps and pools is was related to uh, when schools or daycare centers reopen. Um, the daycare centers are going to reopen. Uh, uh, also that we would, when the province would allow gatherings of greater than 50, we're not quite there, uh, we've put it up to 10 and uh, allow for the reopening of the recreation facility, which, as I mentioned, was only open in part. 
um, as it would apply to the summer day camp. So um, staff, uh, I just want to assure you that staff are working on a risk assessment and a cost benefit analysis. Uh, and uh, of course, a safety protocol to evaluate whether the township should proceed uh, at this time with the pool or the splash pad or the summer camp program. And we'll be reporting back further on that. In any event, the opening of those facilities will take a, anywhere from two to four weeks to prepare. Um, so uh, with that in mind, uh, there's some other good news I can give you today. Um, staff have had discussions with the Port Perry Tennis Club. And as you recall, there was a decision by the club not to open the tennis facility uh, to keep it closed. And uh, but uh, due to several inquiries we've had from the public, uh, the emergency control group uh, in consultation with the tennis club have decided to open two courts at the Port Perry Tennis Club location, and those courts will be open to the public. Uh, the tennis clubs agree to install the nets and posts for public use and the township will erect signage to remind people uh, that physical distancing still uh, um, is, uh, needs to be provided pardon me and that the equipment's not sanitized you're using these courts at your own risk um, the courts also will be used for casual play um, organized league play will not be permitted at this time and the center court will remain closed to provide physical distancing between games. And we should have this ready uh, near the latter part of this week. And when we do, we'll of course make sure we uh, announce this officially to the public and, uh, and advise council. Um, something further, uh, we've been working with the legal representatives at the region, uh, their legal department, and they've advised that the Schuylkill Community Recreation Complex and the library, if needed, could be used as an emergency cooling center should the need arise uh, over the summer. And they've indicated that this emergency use uh, in a severe heat wave would not contravene the COVID-19 emergency orders in place with respect to those facilities. And two more just brief things. Um, this is good news. Also, the Port Perry Medical Association is looking to establish a COVID-19 assessment center and testing, testing center in Port Perry. And they've been working with the emergency control group uh, to find a suitable location. Uh, we've got a couple locations we're looking at and uh, we'll provide more information as soon as that's available. And then just finally, I just want to reassure Council the finance, our finance department, senior management team, is uh, still tracking all COVID related expenditures and monitoring uh, on a regular basis our expenditures and revenues with respect to our budget. And that's all I have for now, Madam Mayor, uh, if unless anyone has any questions. Thank you. Yes, yes, thank you, uh, Mr. CAO. And uh, Councillor Watton has a question. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and, and to the uh, CAO. Uh, with this opening of, um, well, the further opening of, of things, uh, is our or will our playgrounds be able to be opened or is that not part of the, the next step, so to speak? I've had several inquiries on that. Just wanted you to clarify for me, please. Yeah, thank you. And that's worth noting. Um, playground equipment is not yet opened and is not at this point part of the stage two reopening plan. Hopefully it will follow along soon, but if, uh, presently playground equipment will stay closed. I w uh, we may have a challenge if, if our splash pad opens to <laughs> um, being so close to each other that that may present a great, a bigger challenge for us. But anyway, thank you, Mr. CAO. I appreciate the answer. Thank you. Uh, anything further, Mr. CAO? No, oh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other staff have announcements? Seeing none, um, we'll move on to uh, presentations and delegations. And uh, I have the pleasure today of um, 
honoring uh, the 2020 Employee Service Awards and Council Service Recognition recipients. Um, you know, this is uh, one of the hard parts of this whole COVID thing and meeting um, virtually and electronically. Uh, I would love to, and I know we all would love to, shake the hands of all of these people who um, have uh, worked so hard over the last five to 35 years uh, for our township, and, um, and particularly in the last few months where it has been so difficult and challenging. So uh, today we honor, and a lot of these uh, recipients are actually listening in online today, and uh, we welcome you to our meeting, and uh, thank you very much for being here, and thank you very much for your service. So for five years of service, we have Martin Hulehi and Jonna Parker. And for 10 years service, we have Tanya Bugden. For 15 years service, we have Dave Buxey and Steve McNeil. And for 20 years service, we have Suzanne Fox. And for 35 years of service, Steve Bull. Wonderful. Um, I don't, you know, I should have added up how many uh, years that is all together, but it, it certainly is um, a lot, probably a century or so. So um, thank you so much, each and every one of you. Um, your dedication and your commitment to this community, this township and, and the residents and business people of this township is uh, very, very much appreciated. Thank you. Are there any other uh, comments or questions? Councillor Brown, did you have a question? Uh, no, uh, or was that for the there. CAO? It, it was earlier, yeah, that, and that's fine. It's not a big deal, so thank you. Okay, sorry about that. Um, are there any comments or questions on the service awards recognition for our uh, employees? And I'd also like to um, recognize our members of council for our services, uh, their service recognition. Uh, Councillor Jana Guido, Councillor for Ward 2 has been five years in this position. Congratulations, Jenna. And uh, 10 years, Wilma Watton, our regional councillor. Uh, 10 years she's been with us. Thank you so much, uh, Councillor Watton. You've both been a, an extremely important part of our council. So thank you very much for your service. Anything else? Uh, councillor Kiesebrink says super job, everyone. Did you want to say that publicly, Councillor Kiesebrink? <laughs> sure, it's very strange in this format, but congratulations, everybody. If we were there, we'd be clapping and doing a picture together. So we, we just would. know that we really appreciate you very much and we we greatly appreciate. Thank you. And um, if we if you were here and we were there, too, we would all be shaking your hand and, and having pictures and so on and so forth. But I, I see we had a, a lovely picture uh, sent to us today um, for uh, Martin Herlehi. Um, proudly holding a certificate by one of our um, public works uh, pieces of machinery. So uh, that was uh, delightful to have that, Martin. Well, thank you very much once again, everyone. And we'll move on now to uh, 9.2, which uh, the Skugog Environmental Advisory Committee 2019 Annual Report and Proposed 2020 Work Plan. And we welcome uh, Jeff Carpentier and uh, Stefan Martins. And uh, are they online, uh, Mr. Clerk? Yes, Madam Mayor, they should be with us now. Uh, Mr. Carpentier and Mr. Martins, can you just uh, acknowledge that you can hear us? Yes, I can. <laughs> Wonderful. So please, uh, please go ahead with your go ahead with your presentation. Do we have Stefan with us too? Uh, yes, I'm here as well. Okay, great. Please go ahead. Is Jeff here yet? I thought, I'm sorry, I thought I heard from Jeff. I guess not. Yeah, uh, Mr. Carpenter is in here, but his mic does not seem to be working at the moment. Uh, Jeff, can you hear us? Can you type a message in chat? Madam Mayor, his microphone doesn't appear to be working. Mr. Martins, are you able to go ahead with the presentation? Sure, absolutely. Okay, thank you. Please go ahead. 
Okay, so this is the annual report for council to council for the 2019. Uh, my name is Stefan Martens. I'm currently the chair for 2020. Uh, Jeff Carpenter, if he gets his mic working, was the chair in 2019-20. Uh, to give a little bit of history on the committee, it was created in 2015 with the purpose of the Schoolbelg Environmental Advisory Committee being to provide direct links to the mayor and council on environmental issues, to work with council and township staff to resolve environmental issues, and to create linkages with local, provincial, and natural national environmental organizations as appropriate. Uh, CX membership transitioned from three councillors in 2018 to one township Scoobog councillor, plus an alternate, uh, that's councillors McDougall and Gudio, uh, in 2019, plus two staff members and six citizen members representing the agricultural and environmental communities. Additionally, a non-voting student rep and a staff person from KRCA sit on the uh, meeting. Uh, the count, the committee brings a great deal of experience to the township. Uh, there's a large amount of expertise uh, with municipal processes, policies, legislation, environmental compliance and technology, invasive species, uh, invasive species management, tree management, aquatics, natural history, soils, technology, education, and outreach and engagement and uh, through the education component. Uh, we have the terms of reference. Those are governed by, uh, CX governed by them. They're updated annually. And those details, all the functional and the operational issues under which the committee must work. The priorities for 2020 are invasive species, uh, bottled water, plastics, recycling, climate change, student engagement, tree management. Uh, we do have other priorities such as ground and surface water, green energy, waste management, uh, trails, outreach education, infrastructure, linkages, and sustainability. Uh, we do have working groups uh, being struck to better track projects and outcomes as well. Uh, to report on some of the successes, uh, this was more Jeff's area, um, so he would have to speak to it if he can get his mic going. Uh, it's through Invasive Species Strategy and Framework. Uh, they've done some field work and mapping of the invasive species, uh, particularly, I think it was the Phragmites and Japanese knotweed. Uh, there's eradication and there was a report completed and recommendations made to council, or sorry, town staff. Uh, as I said, the two that they had focused on, I believe, was the Japanese knotweed and Phragmite, uh with outreach to the community and a boat wash event. There was participation in Lake Week. Uh, we did outreach and education and seedlings were handed out by the committee. We also provided advice uh, with the development of the leash-free uh, leash dog park and concerns that may have been uh, there for impacting natural environment. Additional successes were also the reduction of single use plastics in the township. That was in 2019. Uh, the Pollinator Project 2019 Sing Package Giveaway. Uh, I believe that's still in the process of just being completed. Uh, and Scugog was to implement a recycling paper and plastic pilot project at Palmer Park, Scugog Community Recreation Center, Blackstock and Blackstock Recreation Center and for 2020. Obviously, those locations are currently not being used, so that will be addressed, I believe, by township staff once it uh, reopens. Um, we had presentations and delegations from a few groups. In March 2019, it was Ontario Forest uh, with regards to the Ontario Heritage Tree Program. Then in September 2019, Youngfield Farms did a presentation to us on innovative approaches to farming. In November 2019, uh, there was also environmental requirements that were linked to developing sites in Scugog. We do have linkages to KRCA and CLOCA, uh, Lake Ridge Citizens for Clean Water, Ontario Soil Regulation Task Force, DIAC, uh, Durham, Environmental, Durham Environmental Advisory Committee, uh, DAC, actually I'm not sure which that one is, uh, Durham Roundtable on Climate Change, Lakes, Scugog Lake Stewards, North Durham Nature, Friends of Nonquan, Durham Sustainability, 
Durham region, and we do wish to have a desirable linkage with uh, MSNFIN. So for the future, we're looking at additional in support of our work plans, uh, developing and implementing projects in support of that, uh, with a focus on invasive species as an example, plastics reduction, uh, idling, and bottle water ban. Now, we want to develop new and stronger linkages with the community. We want to educate and update through delegations and presentations. Uh, we want to create more outreach to raise awareness on environmental issues and aspects. Uh, student engagement is also key to that, so we can actually reach the younger generation. Uh, strong, we have a strong and decisive and organized work plan. And we'd like to work more closely with partners and various groups within the township where feasible um, and outside of the township. More, uh, we have a more active role in planning applications or we'd like to have a more active role in planning applications or any environmentally linked project. Uh, we were also looking at a student art project of some sort and a SEAC environmental tip Tuesday uh, as an update for 2020. And if Jeff has his mic going yet. Uh, we... Jeff, Jeff has uh, written a, um, a couple of comments. Um, yeah. He said the committee is revitalized with almost total new membership, both council staff and members of the public, uh, and encourage more pre-consultation with township staff, redevelopment and planning, and encourage consultation, re-roadworks and green initiatives as well. Uh, and he um, just uh, clarifies that DAAC, DAC, is the Durham Agricultural Advisory Committee. And um, yes, okay, so that's, uh, that's Jeff's comments. Are there any questions? Councillor Brown, you have a question? Yes, through you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Stefan. And uh, I appreciate the time it takes to do something like this. Could you give me an update on invasive species and whether we're making any headway. I think that a lot of people who live along the lake are very keen to see uh, something done there as soon as possible. I don't know if you can update us, but if you can, I'd be grateful. That that was actually Jeff's sort of group uh, that he was working with, but we did start a invasive species subgroup uh, or a working group within SEAC. Uh, there was multiple members that are comprising or working within that group to see how that we could sort of address those issues and come up with a plan or a projected project plan uh, on how we can deal with some of that. Um, Jeff says plan to develop a strategy for 2020 to 21 and develop budget. budget. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, any other questions? Uh, Councilor Kazerbrink, you have a question? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you um, to Mr. Martens and Mr. Carpentier for the uh, presentation. I want to thank the Environmental Committee for the work you do, um, the per like the participation in the Highway of Heroes Tree Campaign. That was a wonderful living wall of remembrance honoring 172, 117,000 Canadians. Um, and just bringing awareness, your pollinators program is amazing. Um, I, you were also very supportive of car charging. We've actually, we're excited to see that um, NRCAN is accepting applications for its zero emission vehicle infrastructure, infrastructure program for electric vehicle car charging stations. Since council approved one in our 2020 capital budget, um, I thank director Coleman and technologist Kevin Arsenault we hope that their grant application on our behalf will be successful um, and hopefully we'll get two car charging stations out of this. Um, I just want to say I thank you for this report and for all the initiatives that you've endeavored. And I'd also like to echo um, Councillor uh, Brown's comments that since the OFHA 2019 funding for Fregmites spring was denied, I hope that in your budget and your proposal for next year that will readdress the challenges of these invasive species because I think those are real challenges for our community. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Kiesebrink. Um, I see that Jeff has made a couple more comments. Um, Plan to develop a strategy. Oh, we switched that one we already said. Developing idling bylaw for. Uh, I, I think there was a, a typo there, and I don't know what that means. And tree maintenance op options. Um, 
Any other questions uh, to the delegation? Um, I might remind you, please, uh, to turn off your mic unless you're speaking because we're getting some feedback. Okay, uh, there's no further questions. Could I have uh, a motion to receive the delegation, please? Madam Mayor, Councillor McDougall, I'll make that motion. Thank you. Second. Okay. Councillor Kiesebrink, I'll make that motion. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Kiesebrink. Um, Mr. Clerk, could you call the vote, please? Voting is open, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Closing the vote now, Madam Mayor. Thank you. That uh, is carried unanimously. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Martins and Mr. Carpentier, uh, for your presentation today. And uh, I guess we could move straight to the report now, 10.2.3. Um, it is in the consent agenda, but since there's been a delegation, we'll bring forward the report now. Um, is there any questions on the report? Could I have a mover, please? Councillor uh, McDougall, I'll move that report. Councillor Council Kieserbrink, I'll second that report, okay. Madam Mayor. Thank you. Any questions or comments on the report? Seeing or hearing none, um, uh, Mr. Clerk, will you call the question to um, accept the recommendations on the report on page 25? And Voting the, is open, Madam Mayor. The recommendation is uh, that the annual report be received and the work plan be endorsed. Closing the vote now, Madam Mayor. Thank you. That's uh, carried unanimously. Thank you very much again um, for your presentation and uh, the report, uh, Mr. Martins and Mr. Carpentier. Thank you. Um, moving on now to the consent agenda. Um, 10.1 is, uh, is uh, redundant. Uh, 10.2, um, all the reports on the consent agenda. Are there any polls? Um, Madam Mayor, 10 point, uh, Councillor McDougall, mm -hmm. 10.2.5. Okay. Any 10 others? 10.2.2. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Any those? Any others? Um, Okay. 10.2.8. Uh, okay, are there any other councillors that have uh, reports that they want pulled? Yes, Madam Mayor, it's Councillor Kiesebrink. Yes, go ahead. 10.2.1, uh, please, and 10.2.9. Thank you. Any others? Seeing none, could I have a motion, please, to accept the recommendations for 10.2.3, 4, 6, 7, and 10. Councillor so Brown, Brown and was that Councillor Watton? It was. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Clerk, would you open the vote? Madam Mayor, just, just, to, uh, just to be clear, the consent agenda includes all items in Section 10. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, 10.3 uh, correspondence as well. Okay, so 10.2.4, uh, 6, 7, and 10, and 10.3. Voting is open, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Closing the vote now, Madam Mayor. Thank you. And that is carried unanimously. We'll move now to 10.2.1. Councillor Kiesebrink, did you make the motion, please? Um, okay. Madam Mayor, I, I was just wondering if we could move um, our, our library CEO, Amy um, Coughlin's report, because her report starts with an L. She's always last. But I'm wondering if, and she's very patient, but I'm wondering if we could maybe do hers uh, next by chance. 
It's uh, kind, that, of you, kind of that, you, but not necessary. <laughs> it wasn't pulled, uh, Councillor Keyes-Abrink. Good point. It wasn't pulled. <laughs> there you go. So you had 10.2.1 pulled, uh, Councillor Keyes-Abrink. So thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, so Did you then make the I will be happy to make that motion. Thank you. Uh, seconder. Councillor Ross. Thank Councillor Ross. Thank you. Uh, this is on the Pine Point Road additional funding, uh, and it's on page 15 of our agenda. Uh, Councillor Keyesabrink, go ahead. Did you have a question? Thank, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, yes, I, it was just a. I wanted to say thank you to Kevin Ar Arsenault, our capital project technologist, for your report, and also for your ongoing efforts on behalf of the Township of Scugog Roads. Um, your work and, and that of your team is really appreciated. Um, your report, uh, the, the actual work of this project uh, would have come in under budget at 18548 if the correct amount of financing of $310,000 um, had been applied, but there's a, a $70,000 discrepancy. And just for the, for the benefit of, um, of, of the public, if you could just clarify um, that for us, that, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Mr. Arsenal. Through the mayor to the councillor, on my previous report, um, I had inadvertently put 310,000 as the approved capital budget, uh, and that was not the case. It is 240,000. So that is why you're seeing the discrepancy now um, to be over budget for 51,000. There is two projects on Pine Point Road that are under that same Dufferin contract, and I had inadvertently added those two together when I was uh, putting the approved capital budget line in. Thank, thank you, uh, Mr. Arsenault, and, and all of us uh, have uh, made a simple mistake before, so I, I just want to thank you for your ongoing efforts, um, and I appreciate the work, certainly the additional culverts and um, the work that's being done um, is critical, especially for those residents who live there. So I would be absolutely in support of um, the recommended motion of allocating our OCIF grant to complete this project. And I just, I just want to thank you, uh, Kevin, and your team for your hard work. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Council Keyesabrink. Are there any other questions on this report? Seeing no, none, Madam Mayor. I beg your pardon. No. My apologies. I thought you were asking me, and I, I, I'm, I'm good. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. And with no other questions, we'll uh, call the vote on this, uh, Mr. Clerk. Voting is open, Madam Mayor. Thank you. And I'm going to close the vote now. Thank you, and that is carried unanimously. Um, we'll now move to 10.2.2. On page 20 of our agenda, it is the 2020 summer student update. Uh, the recommendation is that the report be received and uh, the hiring of summer student positions um, be approved. And Councillor McDougall, you pulled this. Yes, you... I'll make I'll make that motion. Thank you. Could I have a seconder, please? Councillor Ross. Councillor Ross, thank you very much. Uh, your question, Councillor McDougall? Yes, thank you very, very much, Madam Mayor, and thank you for this report, um, Director Coleman and, and uh, CAO Paul. Um, I think we touched on it before. I have some, I've had a lot of questions lately about, uh, about the pool opening, some eager people around uh, who are looking for some more avenues and some things to do in the community. Um, I think we touched on it, and it might be two to four weeks uh, post entering phase two and now with today's news it sounds like we're entering phase two rather quickly in Durham as of Friday. Do we know what that opening might look like or if or when it occurs? Mr. CAO or, or Director Coleman? Madam Mayor, I, um, I would be glad to let Director Coleman uh, reply and fill in any blanks that I may, I may okay. need to do. Thank you. Director Coleman? Through you Madam Mayor to the Councillor. So we did put bring together a, re, a reopening plan to council, which we intend to follow. But um, this, as you know, like this announcement was just made this afternoon that we are now able to open our pool beginning Friday. 
So we right now, as as the CAO mentioned earlier, we're doing uh, cost benefit and risk analysis to determine, you know, should we be opening these facilities? And if we do reopen them, what will be involved in staffing and what do we need to do it to make sure that everyone can use the facility safely? So we don't have an exact time yet or exact plan yet of how it will work. That's something that we are working on at this time. And when we know more information, we can bring it forward to council. Thank you. Anything further? Councilor, no. Keys, uh, Councilor McDougall, sorry. No, th thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Director Coleman. No, I'd eagerly look forward to hearing uh, perhaps next week at council if there's uh, an update to that. That would be a uh, that would be amazing. I know we have a lot of eager a lot of eager people out there looking for other avenues to uh, recreate in the community. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we just want to make sure it's all safe. Uh, Councillor Kiesebrink, you have a question. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, in the report, I, I just want to thank uh, Director Coleman for all the organizational work that goes into structuring and staffing our our township services. In, in the report, Director Coleman, you mentioned that. Um, the report is asking for approval for all 21 summer students, but starting with these first 10, and that these first 10, uh, there's a shortfall of hiring that will amount to $6,700 um, expenditure on behalf of, of the township. Presumably, if we're hiring the rest of the 21 students, then that would incur a further $7,300 shortfall. Um, I'm just wondering um, to our finance director, Diane, June 1st, Prime Minister Trudeau advised that there was $2.2 billion that were, was going to be paid out of the gas tax fund uh, to help municipalities. Mayor, I know you advocated for municipalities to be subsidized. H have we actually received any funding? I thought there was supposed to be monies coming this month in June to, to, to Director of Finance. Thank you. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, to Director K or Councillor Kiesebrink. So we did, we are, uh, I received notification today that we will be receiving in the next day or two our federal gas tax full payment for this year. Uh, so uh, that's a little bit earlier. Typically, we get two payments annually, one in July and one in November. So they have pushed forward the um, release of those funds to us, and we should be receiving them in the next couple of days. So, so that is for not, that is to just uh, further, that's not extra money. It's just uh, money that we were going to get anyway, but it's earlier. Is that correct, uh, Director Valentin? Yes, Madam Mayor, that's correct. Yeah, it's not it's not additional money. Councilor Kieserbrink? Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. That was going to be my next question. Um, so under the circumstances, um, although it was positioned that way um, in the press, um, could could I go back then to Director um, Carol? What, how would we manage the, the shortfall of, of funding under, under these circumstances? Director Coleman? Through you, Madam Mayor, to the councillor, it's it's not really a shortfall. It's just that's what the town's cost will be for those positions. Our budget included um, the parks and for five park students and for four public work students for a six no for an eighteen week period. What we're doing right now is hiring them for eight weeks, and that's based on the Canada Summer Jobs Program. They're providing us one hundred percent pay for eight weeks for those uh, for those positions. So it's not a shortfall. We actually budgeted a lot more than that for students for the year. And that extra cost that the, or the township's portion of that cost will come out of the funds that we budgeted in our operating budget budget. Thank you so much, Director Coleman. So uh, those there's been some young people that have were offered positions and have been limbo for a long time. So I just uh, I thank you for that clarification. And we're looking forward to seeing these these folks getting their jobs and getting to work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Brown. Your mic is off, Councillor Brown. Thank you. And I, I apologize for that, Madam Mayor. That's OK. I'm not sure who to direct this question to, but um, if I've got young children and I want the splash pad open and I want the pool open, within reason, obviously, because you have to do your due diligence, can you give us a ballpark uh, as, to, as to when we might be looking at? Are we looking at July? Are we looking at the end of July? Because there are people out there who love to use those facilities and would like to know if it's if it's a fair question, I'm not sure, but hopefully you can give us a, a ballpark figure or an idea, some idea. Director Coleman. Through you, Madam Mayor, to the councillor. The earliest that we ever open our pool or splash pod are the start of July. 
this year, I think the earliest date we would do is July 6th, because that's um, what we had planned in closing our facilities till. The splash pad is an easier one to open because it's much easier to keep distance in that open space. The pool presents some challenges because of the change rooms. There's only one door in and out of the change rooms. And there's regulations of how you have to clean the, the change rooms and we have to look at whether or not we can meet that reasonably or not. So my best answer right now is the splash pad may open near the start of July and the pool we're still reviewing and we don't have an answer to yet. Okay, thank you very much. Fair enough, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, to the motion, uh, Mr. Clerk, will you call the uh, the vote, please? Voting is now open, Madam Mayor. Seeing everyone voted, I'm closing the vote now. Thank you. And that uh, is carried unanimously. Thank you very much. And we'll move on to uh, 10.2.5. Councillor McDougall, this is the town lined road culvert replacement um, and it's on page 37. Councillor McDougall, do you wish to make the motion? Yes, Madam Mayor, I will make that motion. The okay, recommendations be accepted. Okay, that the report be received and a payment to Whitby of $350,000 for 50% funding towards the contract to replace the collapsed culvert on town lined road be approved and the transfer to the capital account uh, uh, for the uh, town line road emergency repairs from the municipal projects reserved be approved. Uh, you have a question. Um, oh, sorry, question I didn't get it. I need a seconder, sorry. Need a seconder? Seconder for the motion, please. Councillor Guido. Councillor Guido, okay, thank you. Please go ahead, uh, Councillor McDougall. Thank you, Madam Mayor. A question, um, I believe, through to uh, uh, to Carol is uh, Director Carol um, Coleman. The um, was this an item originally budgeted? Uh, obviously not for this year, but I, I think Whitby had noted it in the future. In two years' time, it might need to be replaced. Director Coleman, through you, Madam Mayor, to the Councillor. As far as I'm aware, it wasn't in the town of Whitby's forecast. Yes, they do do regular inspections and they had indicated that it would need to be replaced in the near future. But from what I know, it wasn't. Oh. Okay, direct, uh, um, Councillor McDougall, did you have another question? So, um, yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Sorry, it was, it was hard to hear uh, Director Coleman at the end. It was, it sounded like it was, due to be replaced, but it wasn't in their budget. Is that correct? Director uh, Coleman? To you, Madam Mayor, to the Councillor, yes, that's correct. Okay, so this uh, this wouldn't have been a foreseeable project that we would see in our five-year forecast then? Uh, to you, Madam Mayor, to the Councillor, no. It, it wasn't in our forecast. Um, we, ha we do talk to their neighbouring municipalities. We have boundary roads with five different municipalities and we they have brought forward various capital projects at times we say that we can't include it in our budget because we don't have sufficient funding um, and other times that you know they're, they're not prepared to bring it forward at that time but we do have um, we do work with them to make sure we bring projects that really need to be brought forward are brought forward this particular section of road is the responsibility of uh, Whitby. Is that correct? Yes, Madam Mayor. It's, it's under there. According to our boundary road agreement, they maintain the road, but when capital projects come forward, they're shared at a 50-50 cost. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Uh, just to follow up, um, I know this, this route, uh, not of particular importance, but this road is a particularly um, highly elevated cycling route across from Coates Road, Town Line over and joining back up to Port Perry um, or down into Whitby for that matter. Uh, there is a workaround for it. I don't know if there's a way for them to provide uh, pedestrian access past this section, but if that could be done, that would be greatly appreciated. Director? Uh, to you, Madam Mayor, 
I, during construction, I don't think it would be safe to provide any kind of pedestrian or cycling access through that site because the entire width of the road has to be removed to remove the old culvert and put the new culvert in. So a detour will be in place until this project is complete. Okay, very good. Thank you very, very much. Okay, thank you. I don't see any other questions. Uh, so I'll call for the vote to Mr. Clark. Voting is open, Madam Mayor. Seeing everyone voted, I'm closing the vote now. And that's carried unanimously. Thank you. And we'll move now to page 59, uh, item number 10.2.8, the electronic participation at meetings post state of emergency. And this author is, is authored by our clerk. And um, Councillor McDougall, you pulled this one. Yes, I did. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll make the motion for this. Thank you. I'll second and that, Madam Mayor. Thank you. That's uh, Councillor Watton. And um, that the report be received and the bylaws substantially in the form appended as attachment one be brought forward for adoption. Uh, Councillor McDougall, go ahead, your question. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I just wanted to ask a question on page uh, three of 11 of this report. It indicates that members participating electronically um, will not count towards quorum. Um, I just want to make sure that's that's so we we need it. We need a significant or, or sorry post emergency orders. We will need the majority of members in council so that we have form. Is that correct, JP? Mr. Clerk. Mr. Clerk. Yeah, through you, Madam Mayor, uh, to Council, that is correct, yeah. So the way the legislation stands and, and prior to the uh, changes made through Bill 187, uh, this is the rules, is that members don't count towards quorum and they cannot participate in closed session. Uh, that was the change that was made through uh, the bill that allowed to us to do our, our electronic participation that we're doing right now. Uh, but when the state of emergency comes off, then yes, those rules would then uh, you know, apply again and the uh, the new rules where we count towards quorum uh, would not apply. So yes, we would need a quorum of members in person, uh, you know, at the location of the meeting for anybody else to participate electronically. Thank you. Anything further, Councillor McDougall? So yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, so moving forward in the future, what would occur is we'll have a significant number of members present in council should a member not be able to attend in person for whatever reason or not choose to attend in person, um, they can ask through the mayor to attend the meeting electronically. Is that correct? Uh, Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and through to Council. Yeah, essentially that's correct. Um, uh, there is a requirement in there for you know permission to be provided to the Mayor. Uh, that serves a couple of purposes. One, to ensure that we do have uh, a quorum of members that are going to attend in person. Uh, as the legislation stands right now, if we don't have a quorum of members in person, then we couldn't hold the meeting. So uh, that serves uh, you know, a part of the purpose there as well. So uh, yes. Thank you. And one last question, Madam Mayor. Um, so will these same rules apply for our committee, say the Accessibility Committee or the Environmental Committee? Mr. Clark? Uh, yeah, through you, Madam Mayor, to Council. Uh, that is correct, yes. This, uh, this covers our, our boards and committees, and that's uh, how it is stated within the uh, Municipal Act. So yes, this uh, will cover them. How they operate in terms of our advisory committees, they'll follow along with our processes. Obviously, we have advisory committees is operating right now they're using the teams platform just like we are right now um, however uh, in terms of boards you know outside boards such as uh, the BIA for instance uh, they you know obviously can use their own technology that, that they see fit further very, very good thank no very good thank you very much that's okay. all I'm there any other questions seeing none um, I will call the vote please mr. clerk Voting is now open, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Okay. 
Okay, seeing everyone voted, I'm closing the vote now. Thank you. And that is carried unanimously. Thank you. Uh, we'll move now to 10.2.9, which is the indexing of municipal development charges. Um, authored by Terry Barton, our manager of finance, and um, Councillor Kiesebrink has pulled this. Will you make the motion? It's on page 70. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll make that motion. Thank you. And do I have a seconder, please? I'll second that, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Watton. Uh, Councillor Kiesebrink, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, thank you to our manager of finance, Terry Barton, for uh, this report. I realize that in section 15 of bylaw 4314, it states that we have to follow um, Statistics Canada's quarterly construction price statistics over a 12 month period. Um, Metroland Media reported that Uxbridge Council voted to increase their development charges by 3.9%, but to a uh, director of finance, it, I believe that that actually included in part um, the regional part of the DCs, Is, would that be correct? Um, through you, Madam Mayor, I, I'm not sure of this. The um, the 12 month ending March 31st or Q1 year over year CPI was 2.9%. Uh, the region has not gone forward with their DCs yet. So I'm not sure. Maybe it was a typo. So I believe they were going forward with the same indexing as we were. Okay. And so um, uh, I know that the Oxbridge Council had a detailed debate about how costly the, the development charges are. On the one hand, um, developers can accommodate charges and anticipate them in their business model, but it's maybe an individual home builder that could be impacted by the increases. Um, it, given the propensity right now in the pandemic to defer payments um, to support the public, it, it, I would love to make a motion that we have an exception in 2020 and defer the agreed increase to 2021, but uh, I, I'm quite confident that that's not even possible. And I, I'm wondering if um, our director of finance could could speak to that because certainly the desire is there to support uh, the public, but could you speak to the parameters and the limitations that 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 we are all bound by in, in this legislation? Oh, you're right, mm -hmm. Councillor Kiesebrink, it, we can't do it but uh, for 2020, but I'll let the director uh, comment. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, you're correct, Councillor Kiesbrink. Uh, from our development charge bylaw, it states that we shall index, which does not give us the option to not index. So in order to for us to change our bylaw, it is quite a lengthy process. And according to the Development Charges Act, uh, a new background study would have to be submitted. It would have to be released to the public for 60 days prior to a public open house. And after your open house, then you would pr proceed to bring it forward to council. Um, when COVID hit and this was brought forward, uh, we just did not have sufficient time to move forward with that. I have been in discussions with other area municipalities and they are all in the same boat. Um, I can tell you that the region uh, did have, uh, the, they had the manpower to actually quickly do a background study and release it to the public. So uh, they are currently um, they will be discussing and bringing that forward to regional council on June 24th, but that would only be for the regional share. Thank you. And I can just add um, that at the finance committee meeting of the region last week, staff recommended that the, uh, the scheduled indexing go forward, that we not um, waive it for this year um, after, after all of the study. So um, that recommendation is going to regional council at their next meeting. Yeah, further through you, Madam Mayor, and I, I thank you for that. I, and I think that that's ultimately the challenge is that growth has to pay for growth. So um, we would love to, to do something in this situation, but um, ultimately we are also responsible as a municipality to pay for the infrastructure um, necessary to support all of the residential and commercial and other types of building that are paid out of these DCs. So I, I just thank um, our, our, both our director and the manager for the report. And I just wanted to have that discussion because I'm sure it's difficult for people in this particular time period to, to see this increase, but it, it is a, a standard increase. And I think 
one final question to Director Diane. I believe that all of the other, like Whitby and Oshawa, Clarington, they've already indexed, is that correct? In the same percentage? Um, Whitby and Oshawa indexed in, or sorry, through you, Madam Mayor, Whitby and, and Oshawa did their indexing in January of this year, as well as Clarington. Uh, Pickering, Uxbridge, Brock, and Ajax and ourselves are all set to index July 1. And as part of my discussions with the other area treasurers, uh, they all are all recommending to move forward with the 2.9% indexing. Thank you. Um, uh, through you, Madam Mayor, that, that's, those are my questions. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions on this report? Seeing none, um, Mr. Clerk, I'll ask you to call the vote. Voting is now open, Madam Mayor. Uh, seeing everyone voted, I am now closing the vote. And that's passed unanimously. Thank you very much. Um, that uh, completes uh, the consent agenda. And uh, with no further business, um, I will ask for a motion to adjourn. Madam Mayor, we just have item 13, some proclamations as well. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, the proclamations. Any questions or comments uh, on that? Could I have a motion to approve the proclamations? Councillor Guido. Thank you. Councillor Ross. Councillor Ross, thank you very much. Any questions? Or comments? All those in favor, Mr. Clerk, will you call the vote, please? Voting is now open, Madam Mayor. Seeing everyone has voted, I'm closing the vote now. Thank you, and that is carried unanimously. Um, and now a motion to adjourn. Councillor Guido. Councillor Guido, what a shock. And uh, can I have a seconder, please? Councillor McDougall. Councillor McDougall, thank you. All those in favor, Mr. Clerk, will you call the vote? Voting is open, Madam Mayor. Seeing everyone has voted, I am closing the vote. Thank you, that's carried unanimously. Um, I'm really pleased that uh, the technology went very well today. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Clerk, for all of your work on organizing this meeting today electronically. It's, uh, it's gone very well. We do appreciate it. Thank you to all of staff for your excellent reports and uh, your ability to answer the questions. And some of them were, were tough. So thank you very much, uh, everyone. And I will bid you adieu.